Thank you for checking out Murder Dictionary Podcast. I just wanted to give a quick disclaimer that we are still learning the ropes of audio and podcasting in general. The sound quality and content will get better as we get more experience, so please bear with us through this learning curve. We focus mostly on the murderers, so some listeners may feel that the subject is approached too lightheartedly and with a lack of focus on the victims. Although we want to be sensitive to that, we cannot help but focus on the details or facts that we find most fascinating. And for us, that is often the life of the murderer and the details of the crimes. We appreciate you checking us out and hope that you are also interested in the stories that we are intrigued enough by to explore. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and don't forget to subscribe on iTunes. The House of Roll journeys far and wide to bring you exceptional quality kitchen and bath fixtures. In all of this, you'll see the details of your own story, The story of a life well-crafted. Welcome to the House of Roll. Welcome to Murder Dictionary's bonus murder sode. This episode will be a little different because I'm going to tell you one narrative story that was too long for last week's brother episode. In this episode, I'm going to tell you the story of the Hart brothers, who are some of America's first known serial killers. However common it is in the U.S. compared to other countries, it is quite a statistical rarity to be a serial killer. Beyond that, the odds of two serial killers in one family are even less common. The Harps are one of those instances in which two brutal, insatiable killers branched out from one family tree. Perhaps it can be traced back to abuse in the family or just growing up in such a violent time of revolution. Either way, the Harps would invoke fear through the entire territory, leaving a lasting legacy of brutality. In the late 1700s, Mikaha Harp and Wiley Harp became legendary, brutal, violent criminals. A six foot four Mikaha earned the nickname Big as he loomed over the little Wiley Harp. The Harps were hard drinkers, horse thieves, and unsuccessful gamblers. Though they were widely referred to as the Harp brothers, some sources say they were cousins. Conflicting reports say it was really their fathers who were actually siblings. They emigrated from Scotland and were Tories who fought for the British during the Revolutionary War. The boys grew up close in Orange County, North Carolina. When the Revolutionary War began, the brothers were said to have joined a Tory gang, motivated more by the prospect of participating in criminal activity than supporting the British crown. They brutalized young women, murdered patriots, and burned down farms. One intended target reportedly escaped harm at the last moment thanks to Captain James Wood, who shot Little Harp and broke up the attack, although the blast only wounded him. In 1780, the brothers joined the British troops to fight through the Carolinas. After a year, they grew bored and aligned with the Cherokee Indians, pillaging the region. They exacted revenge on Captain Wood, who shot Wiley Harp by stealing his daughter, Susan Wood. They took her, along with another girl named Maria Davidson, as their wives. These women were treated no different than any of the females the Harps had previously encountered. They were brutalized and held captive as the brothers made their way into Tennessee. It's said that Susan and Maria both became pregnant during their travels. In each instance, the brothers killed their children. The Hart brothers traveled with four additional like-minded outlaws. One individual, Moses Doss, expressed concern for the women, and the Harps made him pay for this perceived treacherous act with his life. The roaming Harp clan spent the next 12 years in Nickajack, an American Indian village settled by Cherokee 
and Chickamauga Indians near Chattanooga. Even after the British surrendered in Yorktown in 1781, the brothers continued to lend their support to the Indians in their attacks against settlers. Then in September 1794, the Harps somehow got word of a planned American attack on Nickajack Village. They left just in time and found a new camp where they continued to pillage local villages. In 1797, they settled in a cabin near Knoxville. Little Harp found a new wife, Susan Rice, who was a Methodist minister's daughter, while Big Harp married Susanna Roberts. Susanna's sister was also in love with Big Harp, so he took both the Roberts sisters as his wives. Some accounts even say he also took the previous wives, Susan Wood and Maria Davidson, as his own when Little Harp fell in love with Susan Rice. Rather than settling down, the Hart brothers' growing family seemed to intensify their need for violence. They murdered two men in the Tennessee region and two more travelers passing through Kentucky. Their preferred method was opening up the torso, disemboweling the body, filling it with heavy rocks, then throwing it in the river, where the weight of the rocks would sink the body to the bottom. When a traveler named John Langford was found dead, an innkeeper accused the Harps of being the killers. Authorities tracked down the Harp brothers and briefly put them in jail in Danville, Kentucky. However, it wasn't long before they escaped by pushing out loose bars of their jail cell. Soon there was a $300 bounty on each of their heads, which today would have been approximately $5,000 per brother. The Harps headed north to invade capture and killed two more men along the way. Upon arriving at the banks of the Saline River, they encountered three men and murdered them to eliminate witnesses that would point the search party in their direction. Authorities closed in, but the Harps shook them just outside Cave in the Rock, Illinois. Once in Illinois, they joined forces with a pirate gang led by Samuel Mason. This group of outlaws would attack flatboats as they slowly drifted down the river. However, even Samuel Mason's band of criminals disagreed with how vicious the Harps were. The Harp brothers would frequently take their victims to the top of a cliff, make them strip naked, and laugh at them as they begged for their lives. Once the victims were thoroughly humiliated, they would throw them to their deaths. It was this practice that made the Masons gang tell the brothers they had to leave. So the Harps returned to Tennessee where their murders continued. In the summer of 1798, their death toll increased with a farmer named Bradbury, a man named Hardin, William Ballard, James Brassel, John Tully, and a child named Coffey. Many victims were linked to the Harps because of their extreme overkill, indiscriminate choice of victims, and their signature method of putting rock-filled bodies into water. The murders continued into Kentucky with a man named John Graves and his son, who both had their heads axed off. Two children and a family asleep at their camp were murdered next. Another man called Trowbridge was also disemboweled. But most disturbing of all was the report that Big Harp had killed his own infant daughter because he was irritated by her incessant crying. One family who must have been unaware of the Harp's violent reputation was the Stagalls. They took the Harps in for the evening, as many pioneers often did. The brothers killed one guest, Major William Love, and heartlessly slit the throat of Miss Stegall's four-month-old son. When Ms. Stegall began to sob at the loss of her son, they murdered her as well. Authorities intensified their pursuit once word of the Harp brothers' location began to spread. On August 24, 1799, the search party finally tracked the pair down right before they were planning to kill yet another victim. Big Harp was shot off his horse while Little Harp fled. One search party member out for personal justice was Moses Stegall, a relative of the slaughtered Stegall family. Moses Stegall got his revenge when he slowly sawed off Big Harp's head. Before dying, Harp confessed to at least 20 murders. As a warning, Big Harp's head was stuck onto a pole at an intersection in Henderson, Kentucky, which was later renamed Harp's Head. Susan Wood, Maria Davidson, and Susan Rice were found at a nearby camp shortly after Big Harp's capture. They each had a child in tow. The women were tried for the Stegall family murders, but were later released and established new families free from the Harp brothers. 
Little Harp found his way back to the riverboat gang in Illinois, where he started using the alias John Seton. He remained there for four years until he hatched a plot to collect a bounty by turning in their leader, Samuel Mason. He and another outlaw, James May, cut off Mason's head and presented it to authorities. Their plan backfired, though, when Harp was immediately recognized as a fugitive. Fate finally caught up with the surviving Harp brother in January 1804, when he and his accomplice May were executed and their heads staked on Natchez Road. The brothers' brutal and horrific deeds left a permanent stain on the American frontier. Since their slayings seem to be motivated by bloodlust, the Hart brothers are often regarded as America's first documented serial killers. While their death toll remains unknown, the details of the bloody case continue to haunt the region, so much so that many of the Harp descendants have changed their last names so as to disassociate themselves from the infamous pair. For more true crime stories like this, be sure to subscribe on iTunes. To get breaking true crime stories, serial killer facts, and ridiculous memes, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Patreon. Since our podcast is listener-supported, we would really appreciate you telling other people about us. If you have friends, coworkers, or family that are also fascinated by true crime, please let them know about Murder Dictionary, and thank you for listening. And now, a thought from Geico Motorcycle. It took 15 minutes to take a spirit animal quiz online. Please be the cheetah. Please be the cheetah. And learn your animal isn't the cheetah, but the far less appealing blobfish. Oh, come on. To add insult to injury, you could have used those 15 blobfish minutes to switch your motorcycle insurance to Geico. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance. The House of Roll journeys far and wide to bring you exceptional quality kitchen and bath fixtures. In all of this, you'll see the details of your own story. The story of a life well-crafted. Welcome to the House of Roll.